guys this is breaker and we are back excuse me with another replay that i took from the front page of drop.sc i'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a rundown and quick introduction to both players upper left hand corner it's funny is our red protoss his name is skiplet skiplet yes skip l-e-t skiplet not skip lettuce but you know skiplet okay so lower right hand corner red it should be blue terran his name is Zoku, and I have a feeling this is not my first time casting him at all. No, no, no. This, this, I, I, I could probably go searching through my YouTube channel right now and probably find something on Zoku. But, um, you know, right now the map that we are on is Akalon Wastes. Picking Ladder Edition. No special modifications to it just yet. But let me go ahead and give you guys a quick rundown on why I decided to go ahead and start casting Skiblet. I'm not sure what clan he belongs to, if he belongs to one at all. He does have the clan tag, it appears BVD. I'm not sure if this is an optical illusion or a legitimate clan name. I do want to highlight that all over the front page of Drop.sc I can see uh, if, like maybe six, seven, eight different replays with him, probably just uploading his laddering session. Um, not sure if this is a pro gamer's alternate ID or alternate tag. I do know that's I do know that Cats actually has an alternate ID, um, the Gun Run, but I don't know about Skiplet. Say doubling as someone else's it could possibly be that. It could very well be that. Okay, so here we go. The first probe is going to come out from Skiplet and get a read into just what his opponent is doing. Something is up here, so I'm gonna go ahead and just fix something that is going on here. There we go. Getting rid of the mouse scroll speed or mouse mouse scroll. See, see, so I can put my mouse all over this wall all I want, and nothing happens. All right, so Skiblet's probe gets thwarted for the time being. I do want to highlight for a moment that we we have like almost 100 gas after the first barracks finishes, and that's where the factory comes into play. Exactly. We're gonna see a reactor soon, and wow, that was painfully fast. Um, I was thinking perhaps we were gonna see maybe a Reaper come out, but um, I'm thinking making a Reaper would actually just it would, it would hinder the progress of a 111 opener far too much. But the important part is Skiblet knows about this, so he can expect um, reactored like basically double, you know, double widow mine production or even double Hellbat. Du not double Hellbat, eh, maybe. Double Hellion production, possibly double Hellbat production, but the latter most would require maybe a seven minute mark to actually come and go for our Terran to actually put on any real pressure. Saturday next court going down now for Skiblet. Actually, it's it's researching the uh, warp gate tech, and I was just wondering for a while where where was the mothership port because I was taking a bit of a while to crank out. Looks like right now we actually have uh, Skiblet with a little too much gas. Excuse me, no, I was looking at the wrong at the wrong income tab. I was actually uh, Zoku had a little bit too much gas, so there it is. We just saw two widow mines and a bunch of marines. Actually, a single widow mine. I was actually really confident that we were going to see the factory get switched up with the barracks once it gets done. Behind this, we see Skiblet going for a robotics bay finish. Excuse me, a robotics bay follow-up. It looks as though this is somewhat reminiscent of Quantic State's um, performance at DreamHack. Just a little bit, like no, 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 no. I'm sorry, I said I said that completely dead ass wrong, guys. Whoa, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the first thing that you would, like, if this was actually a Quantic State opener, then we would actually see the ultra safe double sentry come out, and um, you know, single gateway come out, warp gate, single warp gate, robotics bay follow up, that kind of thing, or robotics facility follow up, and um, I called that out totally wrong. I really did. Now these things are super critical because, of course, um, pros they only get one shot at how a game goes. Honestly, um, it's, 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 it's just, I don't know how to say it, like, one of the, uh, probably the biggest deal, probably the biggest piece of pressure that I need for us to deal with. Now, we do see that the engineering bay is going down, so this is leading me to believe that if it's not going to, if 
if we're not going to see some kind of defensive, um, what's the word? Any de defensive missile turrets, then we're probably going to see uh, a bio follow up that is a possibility. We do have another barracks in production, so now I'm almost 100% certain this is going to be a bio follow up or transition. And uh, the factory, it's just here cranking out defensive units. The composition presently appears to be tied up in. Ooh, wait, wait, wait. The, the Marines, they know about that observer. They do. Sorry. Okay. <clears throat> um. Where was I? Ah, yes. Uh, basically, I guess the factory is just sprouted open to get some early defenses out. The Widow Mine, of course, extremely important for um, holding off against rushes. Oh, but this observer. What is going on here? I'm totally confused as to why we have to growing and ungrowing everything. This Widow Mine, and so on and so forth. I, I just didn't quite get it. I'm guessing. Oh, okay, 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 okay. We don't mind that was in the main just a moment ago. That was actually uh, being unburrowed to actually uh, keep it from wasting a shot on the observer that Zoku knew was floating around in his main. Behind this, the follow-up that we have coming from Skiblet is going to be Robotics Bay. It's going to need that AoE on two bases, and that will be extremely powerful at dealing with a high marine count. But unfortunately, like, as far as... Oh my god, as far as... No, 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 pull everything back, bro! Pull everything back! It's like, you know, Skiblet right now, he's perfectly concentrated on dealing with the uh, things that deal out AoE on him. That would mean targeting down the Widow Mines. Oh, but this, of all things. Whoa, 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 whoa. Get out of there, bro. Get out of there. Like, we actually see Skiblet in a bit of trouble right now. And Stim is not ready, so that's the one thing that is working um, in favor of him presently. So his opponent can't like, cannot just, whenever he wants to chase down Skiblet and uh, crank out a bunch of offensive units and just throw them away, because, you know, still, I mean, Marines without Stim can actually be chased down by Stalkers, so I mean, that's basically where I'm taking that statement from. I need to pay more conscious attention to what I'm actually saying, guys. Sorry. Um, just had a bunch of pizza, so, like, I, my, my, uh, I don't know. The blood from my head has all gone to my stomach to help digest it. So, I can't really think right now. Because there's not enough oxygen to get to my brain. Double Forge transition from Skiplet as well. He's gonna get his second one out. I've heard from Apollo SC2 that this could lead to Sky Toss. I forget what his basis for making that statement was. But, I mean, HOTS is still a new game, guys, so... I, we could just be seeing Skiblet genuinely wanting to get some super fast upgrades. And a couple of Lucid Stalkers are going into the natural here. Just two, I, I don't quite understand that. Now, we do have Zoku throwing down a bunker here as well. Just going defensive. He's thinking that perhaps, just perhaps, he's going to run into some kind of trouble. Amazingly, at this stage, we see that Combat Shields is not ready. It's just now being researched. We're going to have... I, I just don't know what it's going to be. Alright, so here we go. Protoss, Ground Weapons, Level 1 and Level 2. Excuse me, 1-1 one, one is in research right now for Protoss. And... Uh huh, an armory is going down. That's gonna help. I mean, that's gonna get the 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 Viking as well as the tank upgrades out. The question is, which is more pertinent? It's going to depend on the entire unit composition that we have coming from Skiplet. A mistake that I see from a lot of Protosses is, is I, I think I generally think of this as a mistake. It's simply not getting enough sentries out. But hold on, you know, I mean, sentries aren't gonna sentries are not gonna stop the head of that. Could actually force them over on top of them, trapping them into a bunch of stalker fire. And it looks like, speaking of traps, we're gonna have just oh man, two a hungry set of Protoss teeth. This being the upper jaw, these colossi being the lower jaw, just getting ready to fire chunks away at the medevac over here. Yeah, we got Skiblet ready for anything that comes his way.
Okay, so three Colossi. Do we have any more in production? I believe not. I think what we see from Skiblet is essentially him trying to go ahead and uh, restrict his production. By restricting his production, I mean just simply trying not to commit to one to one end of the tech tree. Alternatively, one thing I've seen many pros Protosses do that can help him out here is possibly creating more Stargates, adding them to the mix. That way, they will deal with the Vikings that are in production. And then the leftover ones can pick up the tanks that are that are in the composition as well. Just a thought. Um, not factually, not actually, what is going to happen. Okay, now Zoku is trying to do another, I guess you could say, flyby with Rasmin. Medivac does get shut down. Not really shut down, but um, thwarted for the time being. Server comes out here, spots that one. I'm thinking perhaps, just perhaps it was take it down. Supply Depot now finished. Well, just that. Kind of making more and more Supply Depots, just really turtling up both sides of the map is what we have. But this is interesting right here, the most interesting piece of the composition. The Ghost Academy. And from Zoku, excuse me, not Zoku, but Skidlet, we have the uh, Dark Shrine in construction. He's not even behind, really, as far as I can tell. I mean, just look at this. Zoku's only killed four workers over the entire course of the game. I Maybe it was that last medevac that I missed that did it. Okay, so here we go. Oh my god. Okay, it looks as though perhaps perhaps we had an observer flying in, got caught onto, got detected, and got shot down. I thought that was just a misclick. Forward pylons going down around everywhere, DTs, you know, I think they're gonna get thrown in every which direction possible. We, you know, we had a forward scan going down here, just Zoku making sure he's not being contained or something like that. And I think this is such a golden opportunity for Skiblet to do damage simply due to the fact that his opponent has no static detection. He has no ravens, he has no, you know, I guess the only thing you could call close to detection is the ghosts that are coming in because they can fire EMPs. If the EMPs connect with cloaked units, they will automatically become uncloaked. But then again, if they fire the EMPs on the Tease, they will forget entirely about the High Templar here. And what is this? I do hear an Archon. Yes, I do. And fourth base going down now for Zoku. Meanwhile, we have this medevac drop going down. Plus three on the way for Terran. Plus three, plus three, and plus three, plus three on the way for Protoss as well. That medevac doesn't even need to be feedbacked. Like, come on. That was that was a little tough, but one thing I will highlight right now is I want to say Skiblet's floating a lot of gas. If he were to throw away a few zealots and integrate a few more sentries into the into the composition as well, he could just with supreme ease both with the sentries and the stalkers, target down these vikings, I guess, and basically divide this army in half if he engages it correctly. Meanwhile, we do have a hallucinated phoenix coming in here looking for a scout. And it does get the scout, it does see what's up. But I don't know what's gonna happen here in the near future. I'm thinking that we're going to see Skiblet moving into a position where he can just attack our Terran Zoku freely. Both players, you know, they're relatively uncomfortable in their present position. I will say that much. That much is apparent. Okay. Lots of ghosts being integrated in and now sensor towers also being thrown in. Once this one finishes, it will be able to spot this entire army. Yes, it does. It sees it. Just look at that. Right there. And now the medevac, this medevac is actually kind of moving out, getting ready to throw down um, a counterattack. Essentially, that's going to be one to the head, and this could be two to the stomach right here. Like, just as this Terran army is getting ready to break out, the spread here from Skillet, Skiblet, however, is um, 
I wouldn't say rather amazing. There's a bunch of full energy high Templars here. The storms could either be beautiful or they could be bad, but it's all gonna the, it's gonna come down onto whether or not the EMPs will connect. We do have the medevac drop going down here. This is going to force our Protoss to pull a few units out. He's reacting appropriately, but unfortunately that nexus will be forced to cancel. DT got warped in. Kind of like a high major look kind of thing. Ooh, but that is a 1 HP medevac super. Extremely lucky. 6 HP for politically correctly, but oh man. It's been shut down. These Marines are on far with time as well. We just I think what we see with these medevac drops is basically Zoku looking to buy time. Or not really buy time, but actually distract his opponent. Meanwhile, we just have Skiplet getting more and more upgrades, getting beefier and badder. Plus three plus three did finish, so this paves the way for him to go ahead and get shield upgrades. Scan on top of his army, making sure he's not being called by DTs or, more appropriately, observers. The storm is here, however. Oh, man. They're good. They're good. The, the In fact, what's even better is the EMPs are forced to go down on just one High Templar at a time. That's not effective use. They're meant to hit entire swarms, and now this is the huge engagement we've all been waiting for, ladies and gentlemen. The Archon's sprinting forward, the EFE's going down, the storms are beautiful, and now we see Skiplet. I don't know who's going to come out ahead of this, but it looks like both players are relatively even in this exchange. We need to see these Marauders come in and target down the Colossi, but it looks like Zoku was willing to give just a little bit too much ground. The Widow Mines are going to come up and help the main army. The Bunker is going to fall, it just did. The Vikings coming into the mix, they need to land now so that they can combat the ground army. And, my god, where is this going to go from here? I don't know, I'm thinking we're going to see Zoku hold this, but the future waves of attacks may be a bit more trouble. As you can already see, we have, you know, Skiplet at this high of upgrades. If he loses this Ghost Academy, it'll be huge, and he does lose it in falls. However, the Zealots making their way into the main, the Hellbats being rallied around them instead of actually attacking them head on. And now I think we just see Zoku in a position where, you know, a series of misclicks have led to his downfall. If he simply, I think, alternatively, if he simply had a planetary fortress down here in this location to defend, he would be in a good position as well. Alternatively, we could also see Zoku lift up his uh, his orbital command and put it down over here. He's gonna do that with one or another. The question is, which is it? Oh man, this game is crazy. Okay, it looks like he was forced to. He, okay, I guess that one lifted up in the entire engagement and. Uh, that's being put back down over here. I don't know what's going on, but now we have Skiplet opting to just drive a knife into the bowels of Zoku, and by bowels I mean the lowermost part of his expansions. Just look at this, we have Skiplet pushing forward, racing forward, oh boy, that's kind of bad. That engagement was just, you know, a little bit overcommitment, a little bit of an overextension, but not too terribly painful. But we need to see Skiplet become consciously aware of the situation he's in. That is to say, he's at 200-200. Is he further ahead or further behind his opponent? He's got 70 harvesters as opposed to his opponent's 51. 70... right now? 70 probes? He can start throwing some of those away and alleviate supply. Speaking of workers, look at that. Just a huge line almost got entirely annihilated by this, like these two colossi. It would have been absurd if it had happened, but checking the income right now, we have Zoku so far ahead. And now the fourth base is going to be under siege relatively soon. There's no detection here, so actually this planetary fortress is free game for the DT of Skiplet. We do have a scan going down here, as well as a medevac drop over here. Retaliation is what's going on from the extremities of both players' bases. None of these SUVs have been pulled to repair, but it's okay as the orbital, that, uh, not orbital command, but that uh, planetary fortress did stop just short of burning. This stop taking And now, another medevac drop going down over here. I'm not sure if it's, I think it's actually a separate one, but oh my god, the engagement here is so huge. EMPs were beautiful, and I'm thinking, like, what we could see, essentially, there we go, a nuke could turn this entire game around for Skiplet. I do need to highlight the danger of using a nuke if you are 
uh, Terran. Do not target your own units with it. I've seen him, even Empire Beastie Cutie make that mistake before, guys. It is just meant to pull your opponent's army out of position. Here we go. If you could have two or three nukes at a time, that would that would basically funnel your opponent into coming straight at you like a pro. You'd be good to go, but oh man, EMP is going down. Just, you know, it did a lot of damage to that Archon. And now these ghosts are trying to target down the Stalkers. It's not quite working out. There's so many scans that he can just, he has Infinivision on top of his army. Beautiful scans going down, and now it looks like, oh no, Skimlet's army is in a lot of trouble. But those Vikings are all grouped up on top of the Archons. All of the Archons do fall, and it looks like we're going to see Zoku kind of power through this army for a bit. Just as we had two Colossi trying to take down the planetary forces in the upper right hand corner of the map, Zoku looks like he'll be pushing this back with relative ease. He's taking down the last Colossus, and now it looks like while, is it, um, while he did manage to stop the Colossus, the AoE casters, he just his main army suffered and all of that. He just didn't have any way to get the production back up. In fact, wait, what happened here? Okay, his natural is completely unsaturated. Was there a run-by down here? I think there was a run-by down here. How many workers have been killed at this stage in the game? Skiplet's killed a total of 22. I want to see... Hold on, just a minute. Okay, okay, okay. Never mind. There might have been a slight run-by, but it's not significant. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Never mind. All the worker kills that I was looking at from the early game were actually from completely different circumstances. I think one thing we could see from Zoku to turn this game around is uh, throwing a nuke at the total block position. He says, such a joke race, so undeserved. And now we have Skibble just pushing it before the death knell. No nukes, goes smoking, doing what they can to make some damage happen. There it is. I just missed the nuke, guys. Sorry about that. And these Archons. Oh, the Stalker's got the Archons. I want to go back and just catch that, just for you guys. Hang on. Look at that. Beautiful, right? I guess we could look at it as a timing player. Hey guys, I need an SOS over here. That kind of thing. Unfortunately, it just looked like, you know, his ghost couldn't cloak long enough to actually get that nuke out. Yeah. So there we go. You know, Zoku kind of bitter after that game, but, you know, I mean, what else can you do? Uh, he played his best, but it just wasn't good enough. So let's give it up to Skiblet, guys. That was a good game. And if you guys liked what you saw here today, just go ahead and click on the subscribe button. See you guys next time. This has been Brent.